My name is John Bennett, and I'm interviewing today Vaikunthanath Das Kaviraj, the Master Practitioner of Homeopathy, and we're talking about, what do we call this, chrono chronological or chrono chronopathic uh, homeopathy? Materia Medica. And well, there's a do new way to address the uh, Materia Medica. There have been two previous segments on this, uh, uh, and this is the third part. So uh, tell us some more about, uh, about this new way of looking at the Materia Medica. Well, you see... Uh, Hanuman and Alan, they wrote down their head to food schema, but they still wrote down the time, uh, the times that the, the s different symptoms develop. Yeah, and uh, only after they left, all these times were left out of the further materia medica written by others. And instead of f for following the timeline and the sequence, the head to food schema was devised because many remedies are applicable in several different diseases. Yeah, so. We need to therefore separate the symptoms just as much as we separate the timeline. Otherwise, we become repetitious and mention the full pathology of belladonna in teething pains, in rubella, and hydrophobia, to name a few diseases that belladonna can cure. Yeah. So, how will we lay out a timeline sequence? Yeah. Pick any disease or a situation and give an example. Now, let's take, for instance, scarlet fever. Yeah. Uh, it begins with a general feeling of malaise in most cases, and then comes the fever, and the rash, and the thirst, and all the rest. But sometimes the rash comes first, and then the thirst, and then the fever. And sometimes the thirst comes first, and then the fever, and then the rash. Yeah? And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, uh, the fever is high, and sometimes there's hardly any fever. Well, are and you telling me? Sometimes the rash is dark red, and sometimes it is light. So, are you telling sometimes me? Sometimes the rash is strong and covers a large part of the body, and sometimes it's hardly visible. And sometimes there are complications like encephalitis, and sometimes there is nothing at all. Okay, so are you are are you saying to me that that now Hahnemann treated scarlet fever with with belladonna, for right? instance? Yeah. For instance, so what will using a, a, a chronopathic order? Of disease here, change that. I mean, how? I mean, it's well, still it's still are, scarlet there fever, are and we're plenty remedies for scarlet fever, because not all, uh, as I just pointed out, not all scarlet fevers uh, uh, develop in the all right. same way. All right, in well, different people. Well, scarlet different fever. People have different constitutions. All right, but scarlet fever is not is, is not the it, different. I, I understand. Is, I, the different constitutions have a different idiosyncrasy in which diseases develop. All right. And that's why we have 20 different remedies for uh, scarlet fever. All right. Belladonna, aconite, Baptisia, and so forth. Can we, can we, can we use a more, uh, a, a more um, appropriate or, or a relevant disease like cancer? Somebody comes to you and they say, I have cancer. Now, how well, then what kind of cancer is it? That's point one. Is it right. cancer of the throat? Is it cancer of the lungs? Is yeah. it cancer of the bowel? Is it cancer of the stomach? Is right. it cancer of the bones? Of course, is yes. Is it cancer of the kidney? Yeah. The liver? Yeah, they yeah, all yeah. require different remedies. Yes, of course. But let's say it's uh, pick one. I mean, you know, you've, you've had more ex uh, experience with this well, than I have. Say, for instance, I, uh, I, uh, I have just, uh, uh, I have just uh, cured a case of uh, cancer of the rectum which uh, metastasized to the colon. Yeah? Okay. Uh, I have another case of uh, rectal cancer right now. Yeah? Yeah. And in the first case, you know, I began with, uh, with the remedy, uh, nitric acid, because the pains were very stinging. Yeah, that is typical of nitric acid. Now, how, that, how had this started? Well, you know, it began with that woman all of a sudden, you know, she felt like it was getting more and more difficult to, uh, to pass through. Yeah, and then uh, with the stool, blood came out. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it became more and more and more difficult. And she, she was getting more and more full because the stool no longer co could come out because the, 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 the tumor, the cancer tumor in the rectum got so big that nothing could pass anymore. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, okay, then... Uh, uh, what do you do? So I gave nitric acid because it was so painful and the pain went away and then she went to the hospital and had a, a stent put in there so that at least the stool could pass. But each time when she passed the stool, because the stent is like, a, you know, a thing as thick as your finger, yeah, the stool could not come through because it was all hard and dry and crumbly, yeah. And so 
you know, each time she had to pass, that stent would come out and scrape over over, over the over the the, the tumor. Oh. So it was very painful. Yeah. So that didn't improve anything. But this was an allopathic uh, an allopathic uh, 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 solution. Yeah, quasi solution. Yeah which didn't really do anything for her. So at some point, I just took the thing out and threw it away. Yeah. And then after that, she, she got diarrhea and everything came out and everything came out and everything came out. But it was still painful. Yeah. And so, you know, I, uh, I uh, tried for about uh, six weeks with the nitric acid. And then uh, again, she went to the doctor. Uh, she went back to Nicaragua where she lives. She went uh, uh, to the doctors there, and there they said, well, you got metastasis to the liver, and you got metastasis to the colon. Okay, so she had gotten worse. Yeah, so now what do we do? What do we do next? So then I retook the case on that basis, because there was a timeline there, yeah, from cancer of the rectum, it went to the colon and to the liver. All right, yeah, good. There is metastasis, so okay. we know the timeline, we know the sequence. Okay, so... Then we see that in the case of, of uh, uh, cancer of the bowel, that cadmium sulfuricum is the indicated remedy. But you give that only once a month, because if you give that every day, man, phew, too much. And cancer of the rectum, I, I, I uh, checked that again, because the sharp pains had now gone. And I came to uh, a different remedy, aloe socotrina. So the aloe socotrina, I gave in daily doses of an LM potency, that is uh, one on 50,000, that is one drop on a liter. And they are very, very subtle, and they don't give aggravations, and we gave her a dose of that every day. And then the tumor started uh, started getting smaller in the, in the rectum. And the cadmium himself took care of the, of the, of the, the cancer in the, in the bowel. So now there we had to alternate between these two remedies, although the cadmium himself was given only once a month. Yeah, and then the cancer of the liver. Well, you know, she was a critical woman, always uh, uh, nagging and finding fault with everything. So there, we gave Nurse Vomica on a weekly basis. Yeah, and on the days that she would get the cadmium soul for the Nurse Vomica, she would not get any other remedy. Yeah, because we don't mix remedies. We don't give two remedies in the same day. Yeah, okay. and then. Uh, 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 she took um, caledonium tincture, yeah, in 20 drop doses in a glass of water, and that was also daily. So in the morning, we would give the aloe, and in the evening, she would take the, uh, the uh, caledonium, and on the day that she took Nux Vomica, neither of these two were given, and on the day that she took the cadmium sulf, then also neither of the others is given. Five months later, the doctors had said, stage four, you have a month to live. Five months later, she went to the hospital, nothing could be found. And she was passing normal stool, she had calmed down, everything was nice, and she had become a sweet, smiling woman, and she started painting again, and started being active. Yeah? So, this is how you, how you handle a case like that, but that is because there is metastasis, and you have different cancers, and different cancers need different remedies. Yeah, cancer of the liver, you use Nux vomica or Caledonium. Cancer of the bowel, yeah, of the colon specifically, is cadmium sulfuricum. Yeah, they are almost like specifics. And ca cancer of the rectum, aloe socotrina, and uh, uh, there, is, uh, there is another one, um, uh, Sambucus nigra, uh, can also be used for cancer of the rectum. Yeah? And there is sanguinaria, and that can also be used for cancer of the rectum, but then the other symptoms have to agree. Yeah, so there we see that cancer of the rectum, we already have three different remedies. Now, which one do we choose? Each one has a separate timeline of development, and each one has a separate timeline, a separate sequence of development. And therefore, you choose, according to timeline and sequence, you use a different remedy. All right, 20 seconds. Yeah, so that is how you do, uh, do it. Yeah, and the remedies have to be grouped together, yeah, that uh, take care of cancer of the rectum, that take care of cancer of the bowel, that take care of cancer of the liver. Yeah. All right. Very good. All right. This has uh, been uh, John Bennett uh, interviewing the master practitioner Vaikunthanath Das Kaviraj on timeline homeopathy.